Hi, I will once again discuss the normalized frequency and cutoff frequency in more details in TE and TM modes. We know that the cutoff frequency for TE is m pi plus arc tangent square root of a, where a is a symmetric parameter, and this is for TE. And cutoff frequency for TM is for TE and TM <coughs> is similar. It is m pi plus octangent, and here is a ratio of re refractive indexes, and 1 squared over n3 squared square root of a. It's for Tm. And the normalized frequency v describes a waveguide. It's thickness of the core times k0 times the refractive index of the core squared minus n2 squared. Okay. And this is normalized frequency. So this describes a waveguide. And the cutoff frequency describes a normalized frequency above which a particular mode is guided. So if we draw a characteristic equation, which I have shown you before, in V and B for a symmetric waveguide, we have M which is equal to zero, and this is the same for TE and TM modes, because this is symmetric. For asymmetric waveguide, on the other hand, we have for m which is equal to zero, arctangent square root of a, and for tm we have arctangent n1 squared over n3 squared. Typically n1 is greater than n3, so this will be slightly greater than arctangent of square root a. So here we will have m which is equal to 0 for te, and slightly above there will be m which is equal to 0 for tm. So we have a range of normalized frequency where there are no guided modes, then there is a range of normalized frequency which gives us a single TE mode, and above we have 1 TE, 1 TM, so above that frequency there will be TEM plus TE. And for higher values of the normalized frequency, we will have higher number of TE and TM modes. So here we have no guided modes. Here we have only one TE, and here we have TE and TM. And the cutoff frequency is this. This is a cutoff frequency for M, which is equal to zero for TM, this point is cutoff frequency for M, which is equal to 0 for transverse electric modes. So the cutoff frequency is for B, which is equal to 0. I will show you an example of how many modes can be propagated in a planar waveguide. Let's focus on transverse electric modes. The cutoff frequency for these modes is m times pi for a symmetric waveguide when the asymmetric parameter equals zero. We know that the normalized frequency is k naught times the thickness of the core times square root of n1 squared, 
refractive index of the core squared minus the refractive index of the substrate squared. I can express K0 as 2 pi over lambda naught, so the wavelengths in vacuum. So we have normalized frequency is 2 pi times thickness of the core divided by the wavelengths in vacuum and square root of this n1 squared minus n2 squared. So this V describes the structure, describes the waveguide. So let's make an example and assume that N1 equals 1.45, which is some glass, some dopped glass, and N2 is 1.44, some slightly differently doped glass. So V equals 2 pi times square root of 1.45 minus 1.44 squared times the ratio of h over lambda naught. So let's calculate this. So we have 1.45 and this is squared minus 1.44 squared and square root of this and let's multiply this by 2 and multiply by pi which is approximately 1.07 times h over lambda naught. We know that for m, which is equal to 0, we have a cutoff frequency 0. This is for TE, for TE modes, transverse electric modes. For m, which is equal to 1, we have a cutoff frequency pi. For m, which is equal to 2, we have a cutoff frequency 2 pi. And for m, which is equal to 3, we have a cutoff frequency of 3 pi. So here we will have 3.14 approximately, 6.28. And here we will have 9.42 approximately. Let's assume that h is equal to lambda naught. Then v is 1.07, which means it is lower than 3.14, it is higher than 0, so we have only one guided mode for m, which is equal to 0. This is the only mode that can be guided in a waveguide which has thickness equal to the wavelengths. Okay, let's assume that age is equal to 3 times lambda naught. Then it will be 3 times 1.07, so it will be 3.21. Now the normalized frequency of this waveguide is larger than 3.14, which means that we will have m which is equal to 0 and m is equal to 1. Two TE modes will be propagated in such waveguide. Let's assume that this is 6 times lambda naught. So the normalized frequency is uh, 6.42 approximately. 2 times 3.21. This is larger than the cutoff frequency for the second mode, so we will have, it is obviously larger than the cutoff frequency of the first mode and the zeroth mode, so we will have zero mode, m's mode, uh, so we will have zeroth mode, first mode, and a second one. So when we increase the thickness of the core, 
the normalized frequency increases and also the number of modes that can be guided also increases. So the larger the call, the more modes can be guided. If we want to have a single mode waveguide, then the thickness of the call must be low. Of course, if we increase the difference between the refractive indexes of the core and the substrate, then also the normalized frequency will increase, so the number of modes also will be greater. So in order to have a single mode waveguide, we ha must have a low difference between refractive indexes and low thickness of the core. If we want to have a large number of guided modes, we can increase the size of the core, the thickness of the core, or increase the difference between the refractive indexes of the core and the substrate. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.